This is kind of my default radio setup. I've uh, kind of conceded that the other radios are not great for casual operation. Boot my computer. And probably somewhere around 30 seconds later, this one should be up and running. And I cannot remember if I pulled the video card out of here or not. Um, I think I'm using a video card, but I can't remember. So, we just come in here and um, open SDR Uno. The radio is all synced up. So, I don't look at the waterfall on the radio because you can't make too much sense of it, really, unless there's a super strong signal. We click play over here. And uh, we don't seem to be syncing up, which I need to get a different USB cable, I think. I sure hope it's not a problem with the radio. See that? It's, it's not always loading the drivers. I'm not sure if it helps to have the radio on or off. Um... Or, or what. But I have this problem every once in a while. And um, it wasn't an issue until recently. So I thought maybe the cable might be bad. Which it might be. I know that what it, it doesn't like if you shut the radio off. While uh, SDR Uno is still running. Because... First of all, the radio, once the radio is shut off, you can't actually receive much of anything because the signal comes from the, from the radio's antenna and goes through the front end of the radio and then it goes through the, um, oh, what's the name of that filter unit? The bandpass filter unit, I think. Uh, not the output version, but the input version. So on receive, there's a group of filters that their job is to, you know, narrow things down. So, for example, if you're on 10 meters and you were to disconnect the cat control and actually um, tune your uh, SDR Uno to, say, 80 meters, you'll hardly hear anything because the bandpass filter is attenuating all frequencies below 10 meter band. So, the other thing that happens when you turn off the radio is that the USB device in the radio disconnects and um, the computer or SDR Uno doesn't really like that because the SDR Uno is looking for OmniRig's syncing of it. So, but the way I have it right now, I can grab the mouse, and if you watch the radio here, I don't listen. I, I don't listen on the... Um, the SDR Uno. <laughs> Randy. Um. She don't like a Hummer anymore. She, she says, I can't see out of it. 
you know, we we drove my son's girlfriend's uh, Mercedes, you know, that's something, back to California for her. Shit, my wife got out of it and said, oh, my God, Randy, this is my car. <laughs> Absolutely. These guys are funny. But your hum is an ass kicker. You go any way you want, it's safe. Little tank tower windows, come on. Mm, not for her. No, doesn't have enough cup holders. She can't see very well out of it. I see not to see it. People get out of your way. <laughs> What's it, out of an H3? No, well, maybe not. My mm. H2 is gigantic. It really is. The only thing bigger than H1. But uh, she loves the H2. It's comfortable. It's like riding in a jet all over to L.A. She just and he just said she doesn't like it. silk. Quiet. Well, you know that. You had about 12 of them. Mm, four. Anyway. So we're looking. She don't want to spend the money. I told you she's very frugal. Yeah, I'd have to. I'm not familiar with the hybrid market. Who has what in the hybrid? Um, I, just, uh, I just haven't really looked there seriously ever. I think that's the best. Well, the Prius was was the first hybrid, wasn't it? Oh, yeah, but we're a long way down the road from that. Oh, yeah, I know Toyota has a bunch of, of uh, hybrids that are very popular. Like the RAV4? No, bigger than that, I think. Um... Yeah, it was Sequoia. I'm just guessing. Highlander? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, no, no, I don't, I don't know if it's Highlanders or RAV4. That's it. It's called a series. Anyway, this is how I use my radio. It's called a series hybrid. I just go wherever I want. Okie dokie. Of electric and then the gas engine. I mean, you look at the signals that you can see on the band. You're not going to get this out of your any of your radios that you're going to buy. No radio except for the radio that hooks to a monitor is going to do this. And even your 101 isn't going to do this. Your Flex probably will. But uh, the FTDX10, it's not going to have this kind of resolution. The 710, nope. Um... So, and what the benefit of this is that you actually have two receivers, and the SDR Uno is going through the front end of the radio, so it's got extra filtering on it as well. But, uh, let's see what we got here. And you can just jump around, and you know, you can see the signals. You click on them. You know, and when you when you look at the resolution, I mean, I can zoom in or out. I'm like, uh, I'm just at where it's basically looking at the whole band. But I mean, if I want to, you know, I can come in here like this, and I can really pull up a signal, and I can sit here, and I can drag this over here, and we can we can look at his signal up close and see what does it look like. You know. You're not you're not gonna do that on a lot of those radios real easily. Um, but the seven ten's got a pretty good display until you hook it to a monitor and then you realize it's a little crunchy. Uh, it's not as it's not as bad as this thing. This thing's pretty bad. And the reason that this thing's pretty bad is because you, you can't contrast the noise floor with the signal in the waterfall. There's really not a whole lot of adjusting it. But, uh, we go here. We zoom our signal way down. We can look at an extremely large segment of the band. We can go all the way. What are we at? We're looking at three, four to, oh, well over uh, 4 megahertz. So, um, I think, uh, what does it go? 3480 to 
40, 40. I don't know what the uh, amount is. Let's see if we went to... It won't, it won't let you drag it one way or the other. There are some stops that you can change, but you're not looking at the band like this on any of those radios with that kind of resolution. It's not happening. One thing that does annoy me about SDR Uno is it doesn't go, there's no band stack. So now we're on four. Um, these guys, I think, are running well over the legal limit. What is this noise? Try to keep it old school, right? We'll pass you around to some of the other guys here. We got a bunch of people on frequency. Oh, the extra wide guys. Relaying through Allen, Nevada. Did you check in? Uh, good evening. Uh, did you check? I don't have the disposition to sit here and listen to those guys with their snootiness. Um, some of them have some nice sounding radios. You do need to be listening kind of wide, but um, it, sen it tends to sound really, really bad if you're listening three kilohertz wide and the guy's ten. Because you're missing all the other stuff wherever they have put it at. And we got Paul in Valencia, Spain. The Scottish-Spanish guy. And uh, I've talked to him many, many times on 20 meters. At least, I've got him in the logbook at least five times, I think. Really nice guy. Anyway, this is just kind of how I roll. If I want a backup radio, I've got the 1000 underneath it, and then I have the flavor of the week, whatever I put over here. And the amplifiers are here, ready to go. I don't usually use them.